evening and welcome to this edition of the Evening News for today, Tuesday, October 10, 2023. I am Jemima Holmes. Thank you for tuning in. In the headlines this evening, Guyana government's cyber network not infiltrated, but NBMA says it mitigated over 440 malware attacks. Public Works Ministry to penalize Lego on selling contractor. Important event for the future of agriculture, Agri Forum and Expo to kick off soon. Annandale woman killed while crossing road at Lusignan. CCJ to rule on Maurice Arjun versus NBS at the UK soon. And cousins injured in brutal attack at Grove Bar. Now for the news in detail. The National Data Management Authority says there has been no infiltration of the Guyana government's cyber network. However, it has mitigated hundreds of malware attacks for the year so far. The Venus Samaru has the details in this report. Amid reports that international hackers infiltrated Guyana's cyber network system, the National Data Management Authority, NDMA, has issued a statement rejecting such claims. In the statement issued on Tuesday, the NDMA said its cybersecurity division has indicated that no successful cyber espionage malware was found on the government of Guyana's network. This disclosure follows a recent claim made by a cybersecurity firm that in February 2023, an unnamed Government of Guyana agency was the victim of a successful spear phishing campaign that sought to compromise sensitive government data. Since the release of the article on October 5, 2023, NDMA has deployed its cybersecurity analysts and specialists to assess these claims and investigations revealed that a cybersecurity firm exaggerated a threat in their expose. Based on information currently available, the NDMA said a spear phishing attempt was made against the government ministry. However, the security systems employed intercepted this attempt and nullified its effects. Nonetheless, even as investigations continue, NDMA has contacted the cybersecurity firm that made the claims to gather additional information, verify the data shared, and ascertain the firm's source. To date, the NDMA is still awaiting the cybersecurity firm's response. Spear phishing is a specific and targeted attack on one or a select number of victims, while regular phishing attempts are to scam masses. An essential security against evolving threats ESET research article penned by Fernando Tavala revealed that its researchers discovered a cyber espionage attack against a government entity in Guyana by hackers that could be Chinese. ESET is a Slovak software company that specializes in cyber security. It was noted that the hackers sent the target organization spear phishing emails referencing Guyanese public affairs, specifically emails with the subject lines, President Mohammed Irfan Ali's official visit to Nassau, the Bahamas, and Guyanese fugitive in Vietnam. The reports further outlined that the emails contained zip files, which when downloaded and extracted, allowed the hackers to move across the victim's internal networks. Meanwhile, the NDMA has noted that over 500 million phishing attacks were reported in 2022 worldwide, expressing that this number shows just how common this type of threat is in today's digital world. Nevertheless, the NDMA said even as ongoing inquiries continue into the alleged incident, it remains resolute in its mandate to promote safe cybersecurity practices within government ministries and agencies. We are now joined by Gerald Bryan, who reports that with works on the Leg 1 stelling continuing to stall, the Ministry of Public Works has read the Riot Act to the contractor, saying that it would institute penalties against the contractor for not fulfilling his contractual obligations, despite the Ministry making efforts to meet his demands. Upgrades to the Leg 1 stelling should have been completed since 2019. Instead, however, the contract is currently behind schedule. In a statement on Tuesday, the Ministry of Public Works revealed that they are currently in a standoff with the contractor, S. Mirage Contracting Services. The Ministry contended that it would not be bullied, refuting the contractor's claim that the work is stalled because the government owes them money. According to the Ministry, the contractor has been making claims for additional payments throughout the contract, which has been hampering progress. This is despite the contractor receiving almost $200 million up front, roughly half of the contract sum. It was revealed that efforts were made to accommodate the contractor's additional demands and 10 variation orders were issued. 
despite the revised contract sum going from $400 million to a staggering $667 million, work still stalled at a critical juncture, namely the Linkspan Bridge. Works are now three months over schedule and according to the ministry, it has had enough and will be seeking compensation. Most of the works on the Leg 1 Stelling have already been completed and the entire project was supposed to be wrapped up in August. Gerald Bryan, The Evening News. Once again, here is Davina Samaru, this time to report that Agriculture Minister Sulfakar Mustafa on Tuesday conducted a site visit at the Arthur Chung Conference Center, where preparations are in full swing for the hosting of the Agri-Investment Forum and Expo. In this report, you will hear the minister has emphasized that it is not just a lofty event, but one that has already produced significant benefits for people across the Caribbean community. The Agri-Investment Forum and Expo is billed for October 20th to 2022 at the Arthur Chong Conference Center, and it is the second such event to be held in Guyana. Agriculture Minister Zulfikar Mustafa on Tuesday visited the venue of the major regional and international event, where he had a first-hand look at the preparatory works underway. During a meeting with the event's organizers, the minister emphasized the importance of this event to Guyana and the entire Caribbean. As the host and the lead country for agriculture within the region, Guyana is demonstrating its unwavering commitment to the development and modernization of the sector while realizing its potential of once again becoming the breadbasket of CARICOM. So far, 150 exhibitors and some 100 agro-processors, including 30 from overseas territories, have confirmed their participation in the event. Also participating are a number of heads of government from countries from the region. Guyana's president, Dr. Irfan Ali, will be delivering the feature address at the opening ceremony. According to the agriculture minister, this event is important for the future of agriculture in the Caribbean. In fact, he highlighted some of the benefits that have already been reaped from last year's inaugural Agri Forum and Expo. This event is important to the future of agriculture on various fronts, including growing participation of young people in the sector. And last year, we would have seen the result. A number of investors have already started to invest in various countries in CARICOM. As a matter of fact, I am hoping that during the Agri Investment Expo, we, they, we will commission one of the, or the first, or the largest hydrophonics farm in the Caribbean, right here in Guyana. The project is being undertaken by Israeli company Carlico Inc. to the tune of U.S. $15.7 million. In December 2022, the Agriculture Ministry signed a memorandum of understanding with the firm, making way for the development of the massive hydroponics project. Meanwhile, Minister Mustafa said at this year's event, Guyana is expected to sign a number of memorandums of understanding on agricultural cooperation with several countries. One such country could be Cuba. Guyana is looking to Cuba to help with the expansion of its honey production. As it stands now, Guyana is producing honey, but on a small scale. We are also working very closely and very optimistic also that we can have an agreement with Trinidad shortly so that we can export our honey there. We have some specialists from Cuba who will help us to start our apiary in Guyana. We already identified two regions, region 9 and 1, and we are hoping to go large-scale honey production. So one of that MOU might sign here when the Cuban ambas uh, Minister of Agriculture comes to Guyana. Reporting for the Evening News, Davina Samaru. Let's now tell you that an East Coast woman was on Monday evening struck down and killed while crossing the Lusignan Railway Embankment. That is 56-year-old Polwanti Ramjan of Annadale Railway Embankment, East Coast Demerara. Based on reports received, the motor vehicle with trade plates KICS2, driven by a 25-year-old woman of non Perel East Coast Demerara, was proceeding along the Lusignan Railway Embankment when it came into contact with the now-dead woman who was crossing the road. The impact of the collision reportedly flung Ramjan into the air and her fall on the roadway caused her to sustain further injuries. Emergency medical technicians summoned to the scene pronounced the 56-year-old woman dead. A breathalyzer test was conducted on the female driver, but there were no traces of alcohol in her system. She remains in custody as investigations continue. Coming up on the other side of the break, CCJ to rule on Maurice Arjun versus NBS appeal case soon. Cousins injured in brutal attack at Grove Bar. Please stay tuned.
Premier. Premier insurance coverage for less. Stay safe. Sun or rain? Up or down? No one knows what tomorrow will bring. But with Premier's commercial property insurance, you'll be ready. For all risks insurance, call 223-0840 or visit premierinsurance.gy. Fuel your success. Premier Insurance. Premier Insurance coverage. Are you looking for men's suits for that wedding, prom, or special party? Or maybe you need to update your wardrobe with a modern fit or a new color for work. Search no more, because John Lewis Styles is the perfect men's suit store. Come see us on Waterloo Street, and our friendly staff will help you choose the perfect size, color, and fit. Complement that suit with a stunning shirt and tie, matching bow tie and suspenders, cufflinks, or even a pair of shiny dress shoes. You will love the way you look. John Lewis Styles. Simply different. The NS oil industry has been developing at an unprecedented pace, and monitoring its progress and operations are crucial to the country's development. On board each floating production, storage, and offloading vessel are personnel from the Environmental Protection Agency (EPA), the Ghana Revenue Authority, and the Bureau of Standards to provide regulatory oversight of production. While onshore, the EPA is also able to conduct real-time monitoring that oversees production numbers gas levels and power generation with the support of Maxar Technologies and Services. These are regulatory measures in place to ensure the safe production of oil. Welcome back. You're watching the Evening News. The case of sacked New Building Society manager Maurice Arjun continued on Tuesday before the Caribbean Court of Justice, where both the appeal and cross-appeal of the judgments against NBS were heard and the court has reserved its ruling on the case. Here are the details. On Tuesday, the Maurice Arjun versus New Building Society case came up before the Caribbean Court of Justice. Arjun, who was dismissed from his position as CEO of MBS in 2007, appealed the Court of Appeals' decision last year to lower his pension benefits from $59 million to $18.8 million. NBS has also appealed the ruling and senior counsel Stephen Fraser, who appeared for NBS, argued before the CCJ that Arjun was indeed properly dismissed. In the event that the CCJ upheld this view, Fraser wanted the court to also uphold that NBS had the discretion to determine whether to make pension payments to Arjun. He asked the court to consider the letters of termination, which show that Arjun refused to participate in a meeting probing his conduct and imposed conditions on his employer. Senior counsel Edward Luku, meanwhile, appeared for Arjun. Luku argued that the evidence in the case, including the audit report as well as previous rulings, makes the case that Arjun committed no wrongdoing. It was Luku's contention that Arjun's conduct did not justify his dismissal. Meanwhile, the CCJ committed to reviewing the facts of the case and reserved its ruling for an unannounced date. Gerald Bryan, The Evening News. In celebration of World Post Day 2023, Prime Minister Mark Phillips inaugurated a state-of-the-art post office in Buxton along the east coast of Demerara. The impressive facility, valued at $33 million, replaces the previous building which was demolished on March 21, 2022. Luanda McAllister reports. This milestone is part of the Guyana Post Office Corporation's ongoing efforts to revamp and modernize its services. The new post office not only serves as a testament of the GPOC's dedication to the community, but also addresses the needs of senior citizens and individuals living with disabilities who heavily rely on postal services. During his speech, Prime Minister Phillips emphasized the significance of the achievement for the people of Buxton and its neighboring areas. By collaborating at the national and international levels, we can create a safer, more connected, and more trusted future for postal services in the digital age. It is through these collective efforts that we can ensure the postal sector continues to play a pivotal role in connecting people communities and nations, fostering economic growth and upholding the values 
of trust and reliability. Ladies and gentlemen, the Buxton Post Office that we're going to cut the ribbon to declare officially open today is a living monument and testimony to the Guyana Post Office Corporation's commitment to service to all Guyanese in their communities. It is also a testimony to government's commitment to modernize the facilities and services offered by the GPOC to the people of Guyana. He also highlighted the government's initiative to bridge the digital gap in remote communities, ensuring that the postal sector keeps pace with the digital transformation. Meanwhile, GPOC has reiterated its dedication to enhancing the services offered to citizens, including international clients. Karen Brown, GPOC's Postmaster General, emphasized the importance of the post office being open to strategic partnerships and modernization efforts. Over the years, the Guyana Post Office Corporation, through its staff complement of over 400 staff members, has been able to earn the trust of both the Guyanese populace and our international clients by traditionally collecting, sorting, and delivering letters, documents, and parcels locally and abroad, as well as providing express and courier services. As simple as this may sound, our dedication to the task at hand, security and safety is a major factor in our success. In spite of the advancement of the digital world, Post Office continue to serve as essential hubs that foster cohesion and keep communities connected. This year's World Post Day 2023 is themed together for trust, collaborating for a safe and connected future. The theme urges governments and their postal services to support the development of a digital single postal territory that complements the extensive physical network built over centuries. Luanda McAllister, The Evening News. Classroom sessions at Kanji Secondary School were brought to a halt following another grass fire in close proximity to the educational institution. In this Andrew Carmichael report, you will hear that this is the second grass fire to have affected the school within days. The fire reportedly started in a field situated adjacent to Kanji Secondary School. When the evening news arrived that the scene classes had already been suspended, Reports are that all of the students were sent home while teachers were relocated. This newscast spoke with several residents about the situation. My daughter come out of school and she said she fell along because of the smoke and the teacher called she in back and said it was suspension and she's troubled with asthma. She's an asthma case. Right now she locked up in the room inside because of the smoke. According to Mangru, her livestock were also affected by the smoke. Its impact on them is still unknown. The smoke is too much. We in here, all over in the house, everywhere there's smoke. As long as you see the two eyes running, running along the coal and everything. The smoke when you come here, burn your eye and think care thing what you see all about the you know, you gotta move them away from there with the smoke. And then you gotta lock up and move away and gotta go. Yeah, because every day you're getting fire, fire every day. So if you burn out and you don't, then you're not gonna light back any fire anymore. I burn your eye. You can't get to sleep. You can't get to do nothing as you like. How long the smoke then? Smoke. How long? Since man in the since man in the Panama. Firefighters were monitoring the situation while trying to prevent the fire from spreading. Meanwhile, this is the second fire in the vicinity of Kanji Secondary School within a matter of days. And only the other day the school compound was burning out. That was the next problem with us. We didn't reach a week as yet. 
we get smoke again. This one we more terrible in school yard. The one we think here, you can't stay in here. You can't go down here. You can't go down here, you gotta move out. We have to go by the bridge. By somebody? No, by the bridge. And just stand up? It's all up over the smoke, I think. They got the out dog and then he gave it all back and he come there and he done till about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. From 10 o'clock till 3 in the afternoon. The fire in the school compound last Friday is said to have been caused by someone setting a garbage heap alight. It reportedly got out of control, thus destroying all of the vegetation in its path and also a section of the perimeter fence. Andrew Carmichael, The Evening News. Meanwhile, an advisory issued by the Guyana Fire Service has called on citizens to be vigilant and cautious in light of the increasing reports of grass fires across the country, especially during this dry season. Citizens are urged to desist from lighting grass or garbage fires at this time. If these fires do occur, they should never be left unattended, as they possess the potential to spread rapidly and become major fire emergencies. As soon as they occur, all fires should be reported to the fire service via their toll-free number 911. The Guyana Fire Service has also released several tips to control and prevent grass and garbage fires. These include desist from openly burning grass and garbage, find other means of disposal and or land clearing, never leave a grass or garbage fire unattended, these fires can quickly get out of control and spread rapidly, report large grass and garbage fires to the fire department immediately, do not throw cigarettes or cigarette butts on the ground or out of a vehicle, dispose of them properly and make sure they are completely extinguished, be mindful of parking vehicles on dry grass or shrubs, educate children about the dangers of playing with fire, keep a shovel, bucket of water, fire extinguisher, or other fire suppression tools on hand. Two cousins from Grove on the east bank of Demerara and from Melanie on the east coast of Demerara were on Saturday evening brutally attacked, beaten and chopped by a group of men at a bar in Grove, east bank Demerara. In this report, you will hear that the incident stemmed from an old grievance. The injured men were identified as 23-year-old Randolph Prasad, known as Chris, of Grove East Bank Demerara, and Leon Archer, 23, from Melanie East Coast Demerara. One of the injured men told the Evening News that he and his cousin had gone to the bar to purchase some liquor. We went to a supermarket and we buy some stuff for drink and we head back home. Right? By Chris? Yeah, by Chris. Right? And we was drinking here all the time. We buy we thing, we drink, we went in enjoying ourselves, we went home. And like around ten o'clock, ten to the time, we leave or we head out for buy something else. Because no way around the area they had no shop open. So we head out, we walk through the street and we reach a bar. We end up reach a bar. This is when we see we uncle. Right? And it was a long time me see my uncle, right? So we end up hook up on West River, right? And I asked him to be drinking. He said, drinking vodka. So I said, all right, we come out for buy something for drink. But as you're drinking here, we can buy you something to drink with you. We the hate. Hey. As you the hate. Hey. Right? So he said, all right. So Chris was over the table watching my uncle play pools. I head into the counter for buy the stuff. Right, and when I turn around, I see this guy come in and lash Christopher in the face. After seeing this, Leon attempted to defend his cousin, but was confronted by more aggression. And I run out. He run out after he don't lash Christopher. He run outside. So I run out, which you know me had nothing or anything. I run out for ask him where's the problem really with this guy, make he lash his, lash me cousin, right? So as I run out, he end up turning and lash me in my head. And I fall on. Right? When I try to get the back, he lash me again and I end up falling back again. And then he run away. Then when I get up, I try running behind him because I see what part he hit. Right? So I run behind him. Right? I run through the street. I run must run till I reach the end of the street. Right? I had no weapon for me, nothing. Archer related that he was behind the suspect and as he turned around, he came face to face with him. When I turn around, right? I see the guy come out to the cut, the same guy that lashed me. I see the guy come out to the cut last and he fire a chop. When, he, when I try to run, he, the chop catch me in my head and I 
collapse on the ground. When I try to get the bag, I try he still lashing me. He still chopping me. And I try barring this so come my hand and everything. Right? And I try kick out the cutlass out the hand and try to escape. I get up and run and I fall on back again. When I get up and I look back, this is why I see like five four other or five other men coming behind me. This is when I get up, I run and I run in a lady yard. I have to jump over the fence. Right, and I asked and she for help, help, and by just chop him up. Right, and she said, like, come for me from the yard, in front of the house, because she want nobody to bleed there. She don't like, don't dare there. Both injured men were rushed to Diamond Hospital, but according to Passad, their assailants had a grudge against him. He going to the shop on them thing. He see I going to the shop for go and buy me thing when I tore me back for, for porches, so I got to get. He sneaking up on me, he built in shops for me bag and them thing. If I didn't have me bag, me, me bop to the shop open. He sneak up on me when I walk in for go home and them thing, he tackling me with knife. He hiding in dark car and them thing, lashing me, me spine and them thing. I make a report for it. The police are never find me. Now he go away the other day, he come back, he see me because I'm walking go in the bar and there's a come sneak in behind me and lash me in my face. The attacker remains at large, leaving the victim and their families fearful for their lives and anxiously awaiting justice. Lawanda McAllister, The Evening News. And now for a look at the bridge reports. The Damar Harbour Bridge will be closed to vehicular traffic on Wednesday, October 11th, 2023 at 2 hours 30 for a period of one and a half hours. Meanwhile, the Burberry River Bridge is expected to be closed at 14 hours 50 on Wednesday, October 11th, 2023, also for a period of one and a half hours. Government invests in over 300 community grounds, says Ramson, per mall to lead Harpy Eagles in Regional Super 50. This and more coming up in the Sportcast, sponsored by MaCorp. Superbet, your best bet. As you enjoy your life matches today, place your life bets at www.superbet.gy on any of your favorite matches and watch your winnings grow. Must be 18 years or older. Terms and conditions apply. Play responsibly. Looking to bring your dream home to reality? Or simply taking on a home improvement project? Then National Hardware Limited is where you should start. Let us put that touch to your home. Choose from over 1,000 Berger Paint Original Hues for any surface. We are known for our trusted brands such as Westinghouse, Philips, Satco, Rubbermaid, Pyrex, Gibson Home and so much more. National Hardware Limited, your do it best store. Located in downtown Georgetown and industrial site Rhineville. Vienna's oil industry has been developing at an unprecedented pace, and monitoring its progress and operations are crucial to the country's development. On board each floating production, storage, and offloading vessel are personnel from the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, the Guyana Revenue Authority, and the Bureau of Standards to provide regulatory oversight of production. While onshore, the EPA is also able to conduct real-time monitoring that oversees production numbers, gas levels, and power generation with the support of Maxar Technologies and Services. These are regulatory measures in place to ensure the safe production of oil.